Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of taking cold showers from a metabolic health and fat loss perspective. Now, I think this is a very under-recognized and underappreciated modality to also help to improve body compositional changes and shifts in blood sugar health. And I hope after we break down this new study from researchers in Japan that in brief found that cold thermogenesis and getting cold in the morning can increase, especially in the morning time, can increase fat oxidation, energy expenditure, and can pivot the body to preferentially oxidize more fats for fuel. But they didn't find that this was unanimous across the board. What they were able to figure out in this study, in this lab, has conducted a lot of different experiments relating to cold thermogenesis and highlighting the importance of cold thermogenesis as an inducer or a factor that can increase the activity of brown adipose tissue and the quantities of brown adipose tissue in humans they found that not everyone has the same quantity of brown fat. But in subjects that do have brown fat around the clavicles, and we'll talk about ways to improve your levels of brown fat and the activity of that metabolically protective brown fat, they found that subjects who had brown fat compared to those who don't have this increase, in, especially in the morning, energy expenditure and fat oxidation. And they used uh, a, a pretty interesting set of experiments that we're going to unpack using whole room calimetry, which were able to figure out exactly the fuel source that was being oxidized, the energy expenditure, and looking also at respiratory quotient, which is a way to kind of figure out is the body burning carbohydrates or fats for fuel. So I think this is really important, and we're going to finish off with the practicalities of this, how to get started doing cold thermogenesis from a practical standpoint. And look, it can be as simple as just going outside in the winter, doing your morning walk, maybe do some movement in the morning, have some green tea or some coffee. You want to expose, obviously, your eyes to the sun, even if it's cloudy outside. Bright light helps to entrain those circadian clock systems that are very important from a hormonal standpoint. And then in the morning, your body from the cortisol and the adrenaline and the noradrenaline that are part of your cortisol awakening response facilitate fatty acid oxidation. Really fascinating stuff. And the title of the paper here is Diurnal Variations of Brown Fat Thermogenesis and Fat Oxidation in Humans. So we're going to really break this down and talk about some of the findings from this particular study and what this research group in their lab has also found in various other experiments in humans. So before we get to it and finish up with the practical tips here about how to get started with this and what is cold thermogenesis, what it might mean for you, I just want to welcome our, our new listeners back. It's Mike Mutzel here. I'm grateful that you're here. If you're watching on YouTube and you're enjoying this content either now or later as you continue on this video, please do two things. Hit that like button and leave a short comment below. Specifically, I would like to know if you're deliberate about getting coal on purpose and if not, what's holding you back from going out with a group of your friends and jumping in the ocean during the winter time? What's holding you back from taking off that jacket when you go in your morning walk? I would like to know. So please let us know below. And also friends, during the winter time, it's a great time to support vitamin D from a supplemental standpoint, because if you live anywhere north of Atlanta, Georgia, the zenith angle of the sun is just insufficient to induce that healthy cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D from your skin. Look, it's great to go outside. It's good to expose your body to the sun and the outdoors. But again, during these times of year, it's great to supplement with vitamin D because the angle of the sun is just insufficient to induce that cutaneous synthesis. So our sister company, Myoscience Nutrition, has a range of solutions to help you support your body's vitamin D levels, which are really important during the winter months for obvious reasons when it comes to immune health. So you can use the coupon code podcast to save on vitamin D3 over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience.com. Use the coupon code podcast at checkout. So getting Getting back to the study, they say it has been confirmed that human brown adipose tissue activated by cold exposure can contribute to the increase in whole body energy expenditure and fatty acid oxidation and thereby to the regulation of body fat. This is important. We've done many videos and again, we've talked with Ben Bickman before. We've talked about the importance of how brown adipose tissue undergoes this sort of metabolic wasting in the sense that it will take in energy in the form of fat. And instead of recreate that to the usable form of energy that most cells use in the form of ATP, it creates heat and it undergoes, again, thermogenesis through this uncoupling. So that's important. And this lab has previously reported that diet-induced thermogenesis is 50% higher in subjects who have metabolically active brown adipose tissue than in those who don't have it. So this is important. We talk about sort of the metabolic effect of food and your resting metabolic rate. So if you want to give your resting metabolic rate a little kick in the kick in the rear, well, guess what? You could start your day off with a cold shower. 
You could go outside, as I mentioned earlier, by just taking that parka off and getting a little uncomfortable on purpose, knowing that that small period of discomfort on your 10, 20, 30 minute walk, it will have benefits in the form that your metabolic rate can increase to a tune of maybe several hundred calories per day, which could be that glass of wine that you like, or that could be that little sweet after dinner treat that your kid made for you or whatever. That can be helpful over the long haul, as the study has actually shown. So really interesting things. Here's the table of the baseline characteristics. And again, they used an FDG PET scan, which uh, was able to it quantifies the activity of the this metabolically protective brown fat. What's interesting here is if you look at this baseline characteristics between the different individuals in the, the study, they're young men, okay? Similar body weight, no statistical significant difference in body weight or fat mass or muscle mass. So by all accounts from just a anthropometric standpoint, these are very kind of uniform uh, study subjects. But what was different is the quantity of the brown adipose tissue, which was really important. Now, let's talk about the different experiments that they did. They had two different studies. They had one study where they had the subjects have a standardized breakfast and lunch and dinner, and they quantified the energy expenditure, the fat oxidation, and also looked at respiratory quotient in the different subjects, comparing what are the differences between individuals who don't have much detectable levels of brown adipose tissue compared to those who do. And what they were able to find in these figures that you can see here is there was a statistically significant increase in energy expenditure only in individuals after meals, especially in the morning and at lunch compared to dinner in those who had high levels of brown adipose tissue compared to those who don't. They also saw changes in fat oxidation and this was respiratory quotient. So this is a way of looking at you know, what are, the, what are the predominant fuels that are being oxidized in that person at that particular point in time? And so this so-called diet-induced thermogenesis, Let's just back up. This is important. This is a, another aspect when it comes to your resting metabolic rate and your body's energy expenditure and fuel preference and all that. So if you want to think about a very easy way to increase your body's resting metabolic rate and to become more efficient and to basically have a bigger engine throughout your life so that you can have a little bit more buffer room should you decide to have a treat or have a glass of wine or maybe a mixed drink or... Uh, to go out and have a little bit of ice cream with your kids, to have a little more flexibility in your life, where you can benefit from having a little bit of a higher resting metabolic rate. And the way that you can do that is by being more intentional about getting cold on purpose. Because what these uh, authors in this, this lab study was able to find, in humans that had higher quantities of brown adipose tissue, they had higher energy expenditure, they increased preferentially after meals more fat, if they had more brown ad adipose tissue, and this was most significant in the morning and at lunch. So it seems that from a circadian rhythm standpoint, our brown adipose tissue, and it might have to do with this cortisol awakening response and the, the cortisol and the adrenaline and the hormones that are released from our adrenal glands in the morning, that that could induce or cause this brown adipose tissue to oxidize more fat for fuel and, and so forth. But it turns out that individuals who have higher levels of brown fat, it's more active in the morning time. So if you want to, again, increase your body's fat oxidation and energy expenditure and maybe have a little bit more fat burning even after you eat a meal, well, maybe if you are a little bit more intentional this winter about getting cold on purpose, you can do just that. Now, in the second set of experiments, okay, that was study one using the same study subjects. In study two, they did something different where they had individuals sit in uh, you know, a 70 degree sort of uh, temperature controlled room, which is very comfortable, uh, room temp room. Then they had them go into a, a, a colder room. I think it was 19 degrees uh, Celsius here. So not super cold, but just to the point where it's like, wow, it's a little, little chilly in this room. And they looked at the induction of brown adipose tissue and changes in fatty acid oxidation and energy expenditure. And as you might expect, individuals who had higher quantities of brown adipose tissue had increases in their fatty acid oxidation and energy expenditure after getting cold compared to those who don't have quantifiable levels of brown adipose tissue. So essentially, getting a little bit of cold helps to cause more of the shivering-induced thermogenesis that translates into higher fat oxidation and at higher metabolic rate. So this is all good. So by now you're probably convinced, okay, it probably makes sense to be a little bit more intentional about inducing brown adipose tissue in my life and incorporating this into my schedule as uncomfortable as it can be 
So how do I go about doing that? And so let's let's talk about that practical kind of nuts and bolts, and then we'll finish off with some notes here in the discussion part of this particular study. So what do you do? Well, I'm a huge fan of just starting with cold showers. And so this can be something that, and I like to actually tell people, and I share this with my clients all the time, you want to split up your shower. So first thing in the morning, maybe you're going to get up, you're going to meditate, drink some coffee, drink some tea, do some chores around the house. If you, within that first 20 minutes, if you can go in the shower, and this may not be your real shower. So again, you're going to add in, bake in a little bit more time into your morning routine. This could be an extra five minutes. You go in the shower and just get a little uncomfortable. This could be the first time you do it, 20, 30 seconds, right? It doesn't have to be a whole lot. But you want to get cold first thing in the morning. Now, this does a few different things. It helps to kickstart your body's cortisol awakening response because your body actually, you know, from a circadian rhythm standpoint, when you look at yeah, temperature regulation and temperature fluctuation throughout the day, your body should be coolest in the morning. So your you know, temperature influences your circadian clock system, which then influence your metabolism and, and appetite and all of sleep, wake cycles, the whole thing. So getting cold in the morning can not only help do these things that we've been talking about from an energy expenditure standpoint, resting metabolic rate, uh, looking at fat oxidation, but it can retrain or entrain your body's circadian clock system. So that's sort of the other, I think, really important side benefit. Uh, maybe it's the primary benefit because you'd be surprised how many people have poor sleep-wake habits and circadian issues, and they're, they have sleepless nights, especially women. So women, especially if you're perimenopause, postmenopause, please go in the shower in the morning. Take a cold shower. You will be really impressed with how it can improve not only just immune health, but your body's circadian rhythm and it might help you with fat oxidation. So important stuff. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, maybe you invest in a Belkin Country stock tank. And this is where we started. It was $100. You know, we got the 100-gallon stock tank. We filled it up with the hose. You can put a little sodium dichlor. This is sort of what the, you know, the salt pools and salt hot tubs, that's what they use. There's a little bit less chlorine than just straight up chloride uh, that, that you'd buy for a chlorinated or brominated pool or hot tub. And just put a little bit of sodium dichlor in there. That'll keep the water from turning really yucky and green. And you can go in there in the morning. Now, that's going to be next level. Once you've mastered the cold shower, you're like, we're talking you know, baby steps to walking, crawling, and running. Now, let's say you know you, you do that in the morning and you might need to change the water. You can get a Wayne, um, Wayne Company pump. I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll put a link from Amazon. Uh, it's this little half horsepower pump, and that's how you clean it out You know, once a month. And if you put a little, a little sodium dichlor in there, it, it, the water will last about three to four weeks. So it's not that bad uh, in terms of getting really yucky and green and all of that. You can put a little cover over it, no big deal. Now, if you want to go next level, I really like the Morosco Forge tank. I will put a coupon code below. Use HIH at checkout. What I like about that is it uses an ozone filtration. So the water stays crystal clear all the time. And it gets darn cold. It gets right above freezing. So it's about 32, 33 degrees. Now, Look, I started doing this gosh, about 2015, and we just upgraded to the Morosco Forge. Now, that's an investment. It's about 9000 bucks, but we use that all the time. When we have friends come over, go in the sauna, that we have an outdoor sauna that's you know fueled by a wood-fired stove. We do contrast all the time. It's amazing. The contrast, you know, think about your, your metabolism and your health like a rubber band. You get really hot, really cold. That resiliency and the increase in heart rate variability as, as a result of that is amazing. But- that took years and years of doing that. So you don't need to start there. Start with a cold shower. Start with a walk out, outside. Now, look, women might be a little bit less inclined to do this because you're naturally cold anyway. Well, getting cold on purpose, guess what it does? It helps to improve the activity of this brown adipose tissue. This is your body's compensatory response when you get cold. So if you're like, oh, I could never, I could never imagine getting cold on purpose uh, because I'm already cold anyway. Well, maybe you don't have enough brown adipose tissue to help you get warm. So uh, there could be a little bit of discomfort in this transition and in improving your body's uh, ability to induce brown adipose tissue. If we think about it like this, if you're sedentary and not really active, you're like, well, I'm so tired anyway. I couldn't imagine going to the gym. It's a very similar analogy. We're like, well, you're tired because your metabolic machinery, your mitochondria are not really operating at a good level. So once you start exercising, you actually improve your energy. You get more energy by doing that. So it, it sounds like counterintuitive, but that's sort of how these adaptations that are favorable work. So consider that. Now, you might be thinking, well, what time of the day 
will I get the most benefit, you know, if I want to be consistent with this routine? Well, as this study talks about, in the morning. The morning, it seems that from both the circadian rhythm standpoint, that's when the body temperature is the coolest, but also from a hormonal standpoint, as a result of the circadian rhythms, you know, the cortisol, the adrenaline, as I mentioned earlier, those might foster more activity in the brown adipose tissue, but also they might help you um, to, to cause some of the fat burning and so forth. So it's kind of a two-pronged approach. So just consider that. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do it in the afternoon, it's going to wreck you or you're not going to get any benefits. You'll still help to improve the activity, most likely, uh, of this brown adipose tissue. But from a fat loss, resting metabolic rate, energy expenditure standpoint, try to do this in the morning. So really interesting stuff. I would love to know what you think by leaving some comments below. And I'll just finish off reading to you some of the, I think, important takeaways from this study. And this is the discussion part of this paper. Again, the paper here is diurnal variations of brown fat thermogenesis, and fat oxidation. So uh, this group previously measured energy expenditure for 24 hours in a whole room indirect calorimetry meter uh, and found that diet-induced thermogenesis, so that is how much fat oxidation and energy expenditure is increased after a meal. So they found that diet-induced thermogenesis and fat oxidation are higher in subjects with metabolically active brown adipose tissue than in those without it, thus suggesting a significant contribution of brown adipose tissue to diet-induced thermogenesis. Now, you might be like, diet-induced, how have I... The thermic effect of food. So think about that. When you think about comparing protein versus carbohydrates, sugar compared to a steak, you know, in terms of eating those foods, how it affects the thermogenesis that contributes to about 20 to 25% of your overall resting metabolic rate. Well, brown adipose tissue can, can be like, you know, maybe swapping out um, the, the equivalent, that is, from a calorie expenditure standpoint, you know, steak versus, uh, you know, sugar, right? In terms of, because protein is very, that has the thermic effect of food is, is increased for protein. So, um, so anyway, they go on to say that although diet induced thermogenesis exhibited no significant differences among the meals, diet induced thermogenesis after breakfast in the high brown adipose tissue group was significantly larger than in those with low brown adipose tissue. Even more, fat oxidation was also higher after breakfast than after lunch than after dinner. So in the morning, uh, the metabolic protection of brown adipose tissue uh, offers not only the increase in the so-called thermic effect of food or the diet induced thermogenesis, but the fat oxidation. Now, they say that uh, these results suggest that high brown adipose uh, activity may contribute to both diet-induced thermogenesis and fat oxidation after breakfast and lunch, more so than after dinner. The diurnal variations of the brown adipose tissue-associated diet-induced thermogenesis and fat oxidation imply that the brown adipose tissue activity is higher in the morning than in the evening and at night. Kind of repetitive there, but I'm just reading exactly what they wrote here. Uh, going back and finishing off here with the circadian rhythm. A circadian rhythm in brown adipose tissue thermogenesis has been well documented in rodents. That is, the thermogenic activities and expression of some key molecules, including thermogenic uncoupling protein, we've talked about this, uncoupling protein 1 in the mitochondria, show clear diurnal rhythmic variations that contribute to body temperature and metabolism uh, of glucose and lipids. So just keep in mind, you know, if you want to, when do you take the cold shower? Try to do it in the morning as uncomfortable as that is. Now, they talk about the hormones here, particularly cortisol. So talking about the context of the circadian rhythm influence of brown adipose tissue, they say another possible factor may be glucocorticoids. Plasma cortisol levels are highest in the early morning and decrease in the evening. Considering the acute stimulatory effect of glucocorticoids on brown adipose tissue in humans, it may be conceivable that the cortisol surge in the morning could potentially increase brown adipose tissue activity. It is also possible that the responsiveness of brown adipose tissue to catecholamines and, and glucocorticoids may change diurnally. So the major fuel substrate of brown adipose tissue, they say, is fatty acids derived not only from intracellular triglycerides, like in your muscles and, and so forth, but also from blood lipoproteins like cholesterol and non-esterified fatty acids. So these are the free fats that are liberated after hormones like hormone-sensitive lipase and, and when glucagon and low insulin states can release, cause your fat cells to release more fatty acids. Uh, those are free or non-esterified fats floating. Those, again, uh, as we've talked about before, it can be sent to the, your liver to make ketones. That's part of it. Uh, but they can also directly be oxidized 
and the authors say uh, in that context, implying that brown adipose tissue acts as a metabolic sink and a regulator of plasma lipids. Now, it's important to talk about this metabolic sink concept because over you know too many non-esterified fats circulating can cause this lipotoxicity, and these fats can infiltrate in the pancreas, in the heart, in the liver, in the muscles, where they cause maladaptive sequela, insulin resistance, fatty liver disease, fatty pancreas, all of that. So if you can have train your body to have more, more buffer capacity to buffer these not so metabolically protective fats, right? We think, oh, fat oxidation, free fats, good, circulating. That means that we can utilize them, but not always. And so, um, you know, having this, this buffer capacity could be helpful. So interesting stuff, friends. I think this is fascinating because it highlights a lot of things that we've been talking about when it comes to flaws associated with the energy in, energy out, sort of calories in, calories out model. Uh, and that is, you know, treating the human body as though it's just sort of this uh, homogenous thing. Every human being has the same metabolic rate, no matter what, uh, same ability to oxidize a different particular substrate no matter the time of the day. And we know that not to be true. Your gut has a clock. It's influenced by both peripheral circadian clock in trainers and also the central circadian clock system. You know, what you eat in the morning is metabolized differently um, than what you eat in the evening. And it turns out that when you get cold may influence your metabolic rate and fat oxidation ability, uh, you know, different at uh, different times of the day. So, that was a long-winded way of saying, get cold on purpose, especially in the morning. Okay, that's a take-home message here. This podcast could have been 45 seconds, but I know you like the details, and hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Please share this direct link with a friend or family member. What I'll do in the show notes is link uh, research from this particular lab. Uh, the lab, again, was at uh, Tenshi College in Japan. Um, these particular scientists have conducted a, a litany of different experiments that help us better understand the metabolic protection offered by brown adipose tissue and supporting sort of the lifestyle intervention of getting cold on purpose, taking a cold shower, doing that polar plunge. You know, when your friends invite you this winter, hey, January 1st, you want to come with us to jump in the, a lake, a river, a stream, the ocean? I want you to say yes. I'm going to do it even though I don't feel comfortable doing it. It's really a lot of fun. So as always, friends, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you on a future show down the road. Bye now. Yeah.